Hi there, my name is Jason DeWild and I'm the Head of Audio here at the Australian Institute of Music and welcome to part 7 of Pro Tools for Beginners. In this part we're going to talk about the modes and the tools that we use for editing. Here we go. Okay, so today we're going to have a little look at um, some of the different tools and different modes uh, used for editing in Pro Tools. So um, basically, let's start with the tools first. Um, now, when we edit, there's pretty much three tools that we use, and they're located at this sort of top left-hand side here. The first tool I'm going to talk about is this one. This is called the selector. And we've kind of seen this one already. We've used the selector to uh, sort of get us around the different parts of the song as we needed to. So um, that's one of the uses of the selector. But the other use of the selector is to actually highlight material. Um, and that is generally really what we need to do in our first step for editing, highlighting or selecting the material. So as you can see, just by clicking and dragging is, um, is the way to do that. Now, um, a couple of little things about the selector and highlighting material. If I've got a selection now like this, okay, and I want to change the length of the selection, um, you don't just simply click in the new spot. What you need to do is you need to hold the shift button down to change the length of your selection. And you can keep on going left or right, however, you, which way you want to go. So um, sometimes it is, uh, it's often necessary for um, to, for doing that. So for example, I've got a selection here, but as I zoom in, I might find that I need to change the length of the selection. So again, I'm holding the shift button down and moving the selection, okay? Now in this particular example, the right hand side of the selection is off the screen. So sometimes if um, um, I could use the scroll to kind of get myself there, but um, a better way to kind of do this is to use the left and right arrow keys. So when I use the right arrow key, that is going to get me to the oops to the right hand side of the selection. So I'll do that again. I've zoomed right in. Now if I want to um, go to the right hand side of the selection, I use the right hand arrow key. Okay, and that takes me there. And here I can now change the length of the selection. I'm going to sort of zoom in on, uh, sort of go into sort of this area here. And then if I want to go back to the beginning part of the selection, I choose the left hand arrow again, and I can refine that again by holding the shift button down. Okay, so that is um, a couple of the just sort of the basic selection techniques that we use for that. Okay. Um, if you want to do it on multiple tracks, you can actually hold the shift button down again and do it across multiple tracks as well. All right. so, um, so, so that's actually kind of handy. Okay, so that's the selection tool. Um, now, uh, the another sort of tool that you use quite a lot with editing is the next one here. This is the grabber tool and the grabber is used to actually move audio around. Okay, so um, this is kind of useful. So you can pick up a clip here and we can move it left or right. We can change some sort of the positionings of different clips as we as we kind of need it. Um, and that's what the grabber does. Now, you may notice that the grabber in my case has got a picture or a little icon of some scissors there that's normally not the, the normal mode of grabber um, so if you click on the grabber you'll see a drop down menu and you see that there's different types of formats for the grabber okay so the normal one that you most likely see is just simply called the time grabber and that's then basically the hand without the actual uh, scissors there. I'll explain a little bit what those scissors do in a second, but that's your normal grabber, right? As you can see, it just behaves what we've, uh, as we've decided. We pick up clips and we can grab them. Notice also too that the grabber selects the material as well. So that's actually another way of selecting material by just choosing the grabber and selecting it. And that's kind of handy. Okay, now I did mention before that the grabber I actually had was a, a different mode of grabber which is called the separation grabber and this is pretty handy I'll just show you kind of what the separation grabber does so what it does is if I select material like so okay and then I flip over to the separation grabber oops there separation grabber 
all like that normally the grabber would just pick up a clip but here with the separation grabber it actually picks up the selection okay and now I can move that selection now that normally wouldn't kind of happen so with a normal grabber if I tried to do that it would just select the whole clip but with the separation grabber it allows me to grab the selection and this is really great if I need to sort of move I want to take this vocal and just move it somewhere else without actually having oops without actually having to do a cut or a, a paste anywhere so um, very very handy mode to have so it operates like a normal grabber but with the additional mode of being able to grab selections the final tool that you use a lot is called the trimmer and what the trimmer does is allows us to um, to trim off the left or right hand side of a clip so as you can see as I move my um, uh, cursor to the left hand side of a clip it will change to the left hand part I'm just going to delete something for a second I'm just going to delete this fade for a second just to show you so here when I'm over the left hand side of the clip it allows me to trim off the left um, side of that particular clip if I swing it over to the right hand side of the clip it allows me to trim off that part of it okay and this is really handy just to kind of clean up so for example if you look at this particular part here you can see there's some sort of empty space just here so I could get the selector and kind of try and get rid of it that way but it's often easier just to get the trimmer and trim it in a little bit and same with this side I just trim that one in a little bit as well so it just allows you to make sort of refined just chops to um, the uh, left or right hand side of a clip now with anything with regards to editing editing is always or well, pretty much always non-destructive so if I've just say here's my get sort of a, a, um, a particular clip here if I trim too much of it off okay and go oh, I shouldn't have really cut that bit you can always just trim it back out again so the trim actually works both ways and we can get to you know pretty much wherever we want so trimming allows us to um, make non-destructive edits um, to the uh, to the entire uh, clip okay and in fact all of the editing modes are pretty much non-destructive okay so that's the three basic tools the selector the grabber and the trimmer now there are many occasions, and I've done it already, where you often need to flip between the two. Okay, so or often flip between the three of the clips. Okay, so for example, you know, I may want to like select this bit of material here, and then I may want to like, oops, choose the separation grabber and move it somewhere else, and then I may want to choose the trimmer and then trim it all off. You know, for example. Okay. Now that's so you can see that if you, you when you are editing you're flipping between the tools quite often. So the way to kind of like um, uh, sort of get out of all that is to actually use another tool that's sort of the combination of all three, and that's called the Smart Tool. And you can see now that I've activated the Smart Tool by just clicking on this little gray line just a, that encirculates all three of these tools and it's called the smart tool now I'll show you what happens with the smart tool um, I'm just going to zoom in okay so in one instance the smart tool is a selector so if you notice that if I if I'm at the top half of a clip it becomes a selector but watch as I move now downwards, it becomes a grabber. So that means I can just simply now grab the material that I've just selected right, and move it across. Okay. Then if I go to the right hand side, it becomes a trimmer. And if I go to the left hand side, it becomes a trimmer as well. So without changing tools, depending on where you put the cursor, will actually determine what tool that actually becomes. So the top half is a selector, the bottom half is a grabber, the left or right are the trimmers. Okay, now 
The next thing I want to talk about is the, um, the modes. You can see that whenever I've made a selection, okay, um, it's allowed me to freely do that, okay? So I've been able to make a selection, move re clips around to wherever I want, and you know, tr make whatever edits that I need to, okay? So um, the reason why I'm allowed to do all that is because the mode is in slip mode. And when you're in slip mode, you're free to pretty much move the cursor how you wish, okay? Now, sometimes um, you do want to make edits that are right on a bar or beat. So a lot of my editing, I actually normally start in grid mode. And when you're in grid mode, you can see that your editing and your selection and all of your movements right, are done locked to a grid. You can see that it's just snapping to these blue lines that are coming down um, into the um, into the uh, into the window. So when you are in grid mode, um, it's it will snap to a predetermined grid. Now at the moment, my grid resolution is in bars. How can I tell that? Well, the reason it's up here. So here's where you set the grid resolution. So on the drop down menu, okay, you can see that I've um, got my grid resolution to a bar. But if I want to narrow that grid resolution down, make it down to maybe quarter notes, you can see that the number of blue lines have changed. And you can then also see that my grid resolution has changed a lot too. So now, I, now when I make a selection, that's a quarter note now because I've indicated that on to the um, onto the resolution. You can always flip between the resolutions at any time depending on what your specific needs are going to be. Okay, so I've demonstrated the main tool, uh, so the main modes that I use a lot with music editing. So that's slip and grid. Just for the sake of completion, let's quickly go through the other two modes, shuffle and spot. Shuffle is red for a reason and there's some uh, it has some really good uses but you need to be very wary of what actually goes on so if you have a look here here is um, a, a bunch of uh, uh, clips that I've got here in this particular time uh, in this particular track so I'm going to just show you something here if I go to slip mode and say delete this particular uh, clip Right, nothing changes except for the fact that now that clip's gone. So this one's uh, still there. Everything remains as is, as you sort of would expect. Now, watch what happens to that. If I did the same thing in shuffle mode, all right. So here we are. Here's all my clips. I'm going to delete this one, and watch what happens to these ones to the right of the one I'm deleting. They all move along. Okay. So I'll undo that one. So when I delete a clip. What it does is that anything to the right, anything after the clip that I've deleted, it will shuffle along to the left. Now that does have its uses, um, but you need to definitely be careful when you're using shuffle mode in that regard. Um, I tend to use shuffle mode when I'm doing voiceover editing because that's really fast for that kind of stuff. Uh, but for music editing, I tend to avoid that. Spot mode is also <clears throat> something I don't use a lot, but you know, it may have its uses for you. So what spot mode does is it allows you to place clips into actual specific locations that you type in. So let's say if I, I've got the grabber at the moment, I want to move this clip somewhere. As soon as I click on it, it goes, well, at the moment you're on this clips on bar 77. But say, look, I don't really want that. I want it to put it, say, at bar... 89 right and then you just type that in and it goes over to bar 89 so you know this is uh, kind of useful here it's this one sort of at bar 79 but I want it say at bar you know uh, you know whatever 85 right and it goes to bar 85 so that's kind of useful if you know the exact location that you're going to actually put the clip um, Spot mode tends to be used by um, sound design people, um, and if they have, say, you know, sound effects that need to happen at exactly a specific location in their film, like a door slam or something like that, they can actually use spot mode to specify the exact spot on the uh, uh, track where they want 
that clip to be. So in music, I tend to be using slip and grid um, and just flip between those two. And next up, uh, we're going to talk about now the actual applications. So we've covered the tools and we've covered the modes. I'm going to show you some different techniques in the next part um, into how to sort of put all this together. Till then, take care. So I hope you enjoyed part seven. In part eight, we're going to be talking about different techniques to put it all together. Don't forget to subscribe to AIM TV and we'll see you next time.